Okay, I'm almost certain I showed you this, but I'll show you again. Quantum foam is the stuff that's in space. It's all these particles that I'm showing. These, they are not nothing. Now, this is from oh, 2013, and it says that these particles fill space. They're real, and they have a measurable impact on our universe, which they do, because light has to come through them. On the face of it, empty space should be well empty. If you take a container, pump all the air out of it, shield it from any electric fields, plop it in the deepest intergalactic space to get away from gravitational fields, that container should contain absolutely nothing. It's zip. However, that's not what happens. It's loaded with these quantum scale particles. Space is writhing. It's an ever-changing foam. Yes, Don, I agree 100%. The quantum foam is real. Don Lincoln. That's why everything's slowing down. So the Hubble is basically worthless at, at seeing distances. They have no idea where things are now. None. All right, let me just explain. Here we are again, the Earth. Here's the universe. Well, they're saying light is coming to us from everywhere in the universe from the Big Bang. This is the beginning of the Big Bang expanding outwards is what they're saying. So from the Big Bang everything went this way. Well that's a big dispute now. Now so what does that mean? This is light. Light has to come all the way here. So it's going the same speed forever according to Einstein. Well that's not correct whatsoever. It can slow and speed up as I just showed you. Now secondarily what they are looking at right here, let's say we're here, and it's shooting light from here in, all right? What happens is as it goes forward, it's, it slows down. It just slows way, 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 way down, and it turns into red by the time it hits us. Uh-oh, Earth just fell off of the universe. All right, so by the time it hits Earth, it's really red, way out here. And the further it is, the slower it gets. First it comes in, and it starts banging into stuff, and bang, 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 and it slows down. So the further it is, obviously, the slower it's going to be by the time it hits us, which means more shifted to the red. The closer it is, it's going, and by the time it hits us, it's not shifted to the red. The second thing is, how much goop is in between? It's not homogenous, it's not continuously the same. So we may be coming through real dense stuff here and through real mild stuff here, and the two, these guys might be way further, or way closer to us, and we think they're further away because of what's in the middle stop slowing them down. We, cause every, we think everything's going the same speed, never slows down, space is a vacuum. Everything, every statement they think now in physics is wrong, 100% completely wrong. Until you uh, embrace electron flood theory and understand that there is nothing but dipole particles. They're dipoles. And what is a dipole? Dipole means that there's a positive and a negative to every particle. And I show this in all my experiments, and because of that, these are magnetic push to shovers. And even Don Lincoln from Fermilab says the universe is completely saturated with these particles. Saturated. Quantum foam, he calls it. Okay, my friends. You may have to go over this a few times because it's not really complicated, but it might be a little confusing to you. We've always heard that the nucleus, which is the center of every atom, is a positive. All right? And every little tiny bitty electron floats around it and has the same charge as one gigantic positive. So, let's say that is the core. All right? And it's huge. It's 1839 times one proton bigger than one electron. So let's say this is one electron is out here. All right, that little one out there. Now, this is supposed to be totally negative. This is supposed to be totally positive. They would go, blip, just like that. It, this never worked. This is, this is the current Bohr model. It does not work. And they're trying to support this. What it really is, is this right here. That is the core. And then there's one more of these out here that wants to get in, but this says, no, we have enough. We have plenty. You can stay out there. You can't get in. This is why I really want to get in, because there's an extreme amount of attraction. And I will explain this very clearly, I hope. 
And this one says, I want to get there. And it says, no, you cannot get here. You can stay five angstrom units out, which is a very short distance, and you can float around out there. And if somebody here leaves, you can come in. Beep. All right. Or if somebody bashes you, you might bounce out of here as light or heat or energy, electricity. That's how electricity is made. That's why there's so much electricity within hydrogen itself. Hydrogen is not one gigantic positive. It's 1839 negatives. Well, not negatives, they're dipoles. Because everything there is is a dipole. You see that? That's what light really is. It's two electrons. Each one of these, that's an electron, that's an electron. This one faces up, this one faces down. It's two bar magnets whoop, attached together. Here's what they look like energetically. And that's exactly what Don Lincoln from Fermilab says, and I agree. That is the black particle right there. Right? Sometimes this does not home in real good, so I'm gonna, I think that's a pretty good shot. Now, what are we looking at? That's a photon of light, and I will show you how we arrived to be able to make that decision. It's straight from a, a, a pulsed red laser. This is the energy signature. When I say an energy signature, this is the luminosity. There's no luminosity whatsoever from the black one. That is dark matter, dark energy, and it is also gravity. And it is the entire weight, almost. And it could be the entire weight of this particle, the black particles. They're fixed. Fermilab, Don Lincoln says this is a fixed particle, the black one with a glowy edge around it. 100% agreed, Don. This is the point particle, which can get big and small and may have no mass whatsoever. 100% agree. Now, we not only did that, all right, we took those particles here and put them through a Venturi right here. All right, this is the red laser. That's that particle, which I'm showing up there, right there. And it is accelerating, it looks like to me, and then that is the explosion at the Venturi. At that, at that point, it actually divides. The black comes away from the white, which is called fission. And this is fusion. This is cold. We had no additional energy. And it's exactly what CERN and Fermilab are looking for. The muon neutrino and the electron neutrino attached together. A black and white ball. Yes, agreed. When they hit the Venturi, whole different situation. The white turns into a shower, all right, and it's just this explosive energetic blast. The black does nothing. <laughs> it just goes on its way. It has no interaction whatsoever other than to just get away from the white because what we did was we created a tiny, tiny, tiny venturi, which is nothing, nothing more than like a funnel coming in. And it's so small that only the white can get through because the white is squishy. See it? It is not a fixed particle like these. The white is a squishy little bugger. That's it right there. It can squish down or it can stay, it can get huge. This never changes. That's it. Case is closed for the black particle. And that's exactly what you see right here. No difference whatsoever. So, what does that mean in the terms of what we're looking at here? The current Bohr model is not correct. This is the correct model, which is the dipole flood, electron flood theory. And everything is a dipole, and not anything in the world or in the universe is made of anything other than these two particles that I can determine. The white is, turns into a spray, so I don't know what's going on with the white. If, why it turns into that big splashy spray of energy. Now, it does. There is no question about that. What's happening within here? I'm not 100% certain. But I can see there's an exponential increase in energy. I mean, there's no question whatsoever. You see back here, very little up here, bada bada boom. There is no other explanation for this, and there's an increase in energy. If there's an increase in energy, we may be able to get free energy right here. Very, very simple, too. Now, you're going to probably want to go over this a couple, three times. Just these very basic introductory principles. What is Hubble's law? What is Hubble's law? Hubble's law says that 
the observation in physical cosmology, the observation is that galaxies are moving away from Earth at speeds proportional to their distance. In other words, the further they are, the faster they're going. In other words, I'll, I'll explain it in a minute, but in other words, the farther they are, the faster they are moving away from Earth. The velocity of the galaxies has been determined by their redshift. I'm going to explain that. That's how the wave flattens out. A shift of the light they emit toward the red end of the visible spectrum. This is really comical. Everything we are doing is based on this total, total falseness that should be observed by anybody over 10 years old. Hard to believe this is not, not understood. Absolutely impossible to believe, really. All right, this is, what I'd like to do is some more experiments. We stopped doing experiments oh, five, six years ago because nobody paid attention. But this is red laser light coming through the air. You see all these little dots here? That is an energetic reaction to the push of the particle, which is magnetic, and it has a magnetic field surrounding it, like a ball, a bubble of magnetism. And the particle is right in the center of that bubble of magnetism. All of these have to have also their own little bubble of magnetism. Now, here's the key. I see this coming through the air, and I see a ton of little white particles. I think you can see that. Let me home in on that. All right, you see that? Now, as I started thinking about it, <coughs> excuse me, are these the gases in the air, like nitrogen and hydrogen and oxygen? They all have they all they're all made of the same particles as every other particle is made of, is is the the muon and electron neutrinos in masses called molecules and gases. Now, so they have to concuss and get out of the way. Now, is so I started thinking about this. Is it the actual molecule itself or is it the free electrons that are in the air called ambient heat? If it's the ambient heat, if we were in really a hot room, we should see this almost completely glow. That's my thinking. If it was really cold in there, there wouldn't be hardly any extra electrons because the colder it is, the less electrons are in there. And then you would see less of this particle interaction. I'd love to see this happen in two different temperatures <laughs> to see if, you know what I'm saying? Because I think that, I think these are free electrons in the air now. That's what I'm thinking. Because that's what heat is. Anytime it's warm, it's just nothing more than extra electrons, nothing more than extra free electrons attached primarily to water molecules and other gases and so forth. But it's, it's, it's extra electrons. That's my thinking now. Because everything's got to change. If, if electron flood theory is correct, which it is, I can see it's correct. And if you can't see it, well, I don't know how to help you. But you can see that the things that they're breaking apart from from CERN and so forth are the exact same particles we're seeing right here. The, same, the exact same particles. Only they're seeing a piece here, they're seeing a piece there, they're seeing a chunk here, they're seeing instead of just one, they're seeing six of them at a time and calling that a tetraquark and another one is a muon and a bosons and W this and Z that and all kinds of particle things they're seeing because they're smashing huge pieces together. We started with light, we ended with light, and we separated that light into its components, which is the muon, the black ball, and the electron shower, which is the white ball. These are the Higgs fields. And I don't think anybody can dispute that. And this is the actual spray coming out. So we are looking into the venturi now. And this distance here is this white distance. And then the particle of this white sizzler Bam! It hits into reality at basically this exact distance out. You see it? It's almost exactly perfect. And at that point, they start to make their separation patterns, which they would call interference. This is a single slit. These are not waves going this way and that way and the other way. The reason we're seeing them come, some going this way and some coming that way, is because it's a spinning disc, first of all. It spins. So some come through this way, some come over the top that way. <laughs> it's very simple. Now, not, not only that, they don't want to be next to each other. So when they get next to each other, you say, you stay away from me, I'll stay away from you, stay away from me. And they set up these lines of interference. Very, very, 
very precise lines of interference and it's single slit so it's not a wave going here and a wave coming here they always said it's because of water double slit single slit so that's wrong so if if what i'm showing is correct which i can't see how anybody can dispute it this is the particle that particle it was in this wave and because of the venturi it had to accelerate this is a known principle the venturi is an atomizer we are a photonizer here we're taking photons and atomizing them we're making them into their components are these free electrons in the air i believe they are these are higgs fields that's i don't think anybody can question that they're identical to what they see at cern all this stuff is identical now this one here <laughs> this is the killer Bada boom, what is that? This particle came through, I believe, backwards. You can see that? Sometimes this thing hazes in and out. That particle right there, I have no clue what to think at this moment. But I believe it's a backward spinner. Anyway, there's and I can see these to see the blue over here? The blue is slowing down. You see it's coming in hot, real hot. <laughs> slowing down I, you know the same thing is happening with the light coming towards us through space and the reason it's slowing down is because it's it, it just came through the venturi hot huh? and it's now been pushed into back into reality and slowing down that's all it is and the same thing with the hubble they're not stretching out because here's what they're saying let me show you again Okay, my friends, this is going to be another one of these shockers. I'm telling you, I can't believe how much we have missed. This is the beautiful home of all of humanity, which is Earth. This is the universe. Hubble's law and the constant says that everything is moving away from Earth. And the further it is away, the faster it's going. And they measure that by the redshift. Now, why would we be the center of the universe and everything is going away from us in every direction? <laughs> so, first of all, that's kind of an issue I'd like to deal with. Secondly, light, they think, this can't slow down. It goes the same speed forever, always no, no speed difference whatsoever. So, that means if it's slowing down looking, it means that it, it's got to be expanding because it's being pulled away from the Earth, so it looks like it's slowing down. No, it is slowing down because the Earth is, uh, the universe is saturated with magnetic particles that it has to plow through. And I can actually physically show you this. Okay, my friends, I, I, this is going to be a shocker, but it's just, it's unbelievable that it's not understood. Quantum foam, this is from Fermilab. They are the ones doing all the top end research, just like CERN, Lawrence Livermore, JPL, NASA. They are all looking for what's going on in space. Space is not empty. Empty space isn't empty. The foam on the head of a root beer is complicated environment with bubbles spreading out and disappearing and dizzying display of changes and all things going on. Empty space experiences a similar activity. Subatomic particles winking in and out of existence. Subatomic. These ephoral subatomic particles are real and have, an, have a measurable impact on our universe. Now, who's saying that? Not Roger Spur. Well, I am now. <laughs> but Don Lincoln. From Fermi Lab says this, the quantum foam is real. The microcosm continual motion. The universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it is stranger than we can imagine. Well, I can imagine how strange it is, and I'm having a hard time finding anybody else who can. Okay, my friends, I will prove to you, I mean literally prove 100%, and Fermilab agrees with me that space is saturated with particles. Particles slow light down, therefore Hubble does not work.